Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're in the village of Rotherwick in Hampshire. It's situated about seven miles northeast of Basingstoke between the A33 and the A30. And we're going to be walking a roughly four mile circular route, starting off in the village, then heading south along a long distance path through some woods. Then we'll bear north of Rotherwick, across fields and through more woods before ending back at the village. Now I'm filming at the end of the summer. It is a glorious day, blue sky, hardly a cloud up there very little wind. It is going to be a warm one but we've got plenty of water and we're going to take it easy keeping in the shade but should be perfect for a walk. Do come along with us. Well I've parked my car by the church and I come to the west end of the village to have a little wander through Rotherwick. Behind me here you can see a quite delightful pond which does appear on a very old map and it probably hasn't changed too much over the years. But isn't that delightful? I love those bulrushes. Can't remember seeing quite so many in one place before. And just next to the pond, tiny little village green with a bench and a few trees. Now, as far as the village history is concerned, well, Rotherwick probably was part of the Royal Manor of Odium at the time of the Doomsday Book. In 1302, it became part of the Manor of Greywell, and then in 1629, the manor of Rotherick was sold to Richard Tilney. His descendant, Frederick Tilney, who was an MP, built Tilney Hall on the estate in 1700. And the present uh, Tilney Hall is to the south of the village, and that dates from the 1890s. Well, there are certainly some quite exquisite houses in the village. Look at this one here, looking quite glorious in the morning sunshine. And this is the church at Rotherwick. It's not actually got a, a dedication as far as I can see. The oldest part is the narrow chancel, which is uh, from the 13th century. The wide nave originates from the 15th century when it was timber framed and the walling was replaced with brick in the 16th century. The western brick tower was added in the 17th century and uh, the two short aisles of two bays added in the 19th century, together with a porch. Apparently one face of the tower is pitted with deep holes. <laughs> Folk aren't certain, but it may have been made by gunshots from Cromwell's men in the Civil War. Certainly they did that sort of thing to churches at the time. Well, we'll have a quick peep inside. A magnificent uh, thick wooden door there with studs and just next to it there's the font which I believe is 13th century. The oak pews here date to the 16th century. I'm just looking up at the west end of the nave apparently there was once a musician's gallery up there and the door to the gallery I think is up there it can be seen in the clock chamber. I believe it's got six bells here, one of which is 400 years old. Just looking towards the chancel, got the pulpit on the right there, a tremendous stained glass window above the altar. Now just on the floor either side of the chancel there are slabs to the Tilney family, uh, owners of the, the manor at one stage. I just noticed on the southern side of the chancel, a little stained glass window there, celebrating 300 years of the primary school. We'll be passing that school quite shortly. Now this house here, you can only see the top of it because of the hedge in front, that's the original school. I think it's still called School House, but it was built in 1711. And then a, a new school was built in 1872 and extended in 1896 and of course we saw that magnificent stained glass window dedicated to the school in the church. 
And this is the first of two pubs in the village, the Coach and Horses. It's an old coaching inn that dates back to the 16th century, possibly the early 1500s. Now, sadly, it's closed on Mondays, and today is a Monday. Wow, how about this for a village hall? Built uh, between 1932 and 1933, and oh, it's one of the most attractive village halls in the country. Owned, I believe, by a charitable trust. Magnificent, isn't it? And this is the second pub in the village, the Falcon, which I believe was established in 1873, not 100% sure. And it too is closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. Well, what a delightful and pretty village. It gets its name, by the way, from the word hither and wick, which means sort of cattle enclosure. Right, we're going to now start heading out into the countryside by picking up a footpath that heads southwards. Now, there's a handy little village map here, but I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. We'll give it a go anyway. So, we're going to start off on a little footpath that goes out of the village to the south. And then we'll head along this footpath here through some woods. And then head north again on the sort of northern side of the village, then head west up here to, is it Lyde Green? Down a little road uh, until we meet a footpath alongside some trees back to the village. Aha, uh -huh, there's the footpath sign that I was looking for. I love these metal ones that are painted. They uh, look so permanent, don't they? <laughs> Well, you can tell that we're in the late summer season now. Although it's a glorious day, that's for sure, with a stubble field in front of me. Now, a little important part of the walk for those folk that might be doing this after seeing the video. We've been heading south through some stubble fields and we've got to cross a track here. So we don't want to go left, which is on a bridleway. We want to cross over and then join a footpath, which will then start heading eastwards. We're now wandering through a little field. We're actually on part of the Brenda Park away, which is an old friend of ours, a 78 mile long distance path that runs from Andover to Aldershot. It was created in 2011 by the North Hampshire Downs Ramblers uh, in memory of Brenda Parker, who died in 2008. Uh, Brenda was a prominent member. And the way marker is a, a chaffinch uh, Brenda was very fond of birds. It's Blackberry o'clock. Am I going to have to pick them for you? <laughs> Again, not not the biggest uh, that we've seen, but refreshing nonetheless. One more. There we go. Good boy. What a really peaceful. A little bit of woodland and very welcome too, giving us some shade. I didn't realise how warm it was going to be today, but uh, 
I mustn't complain. It's lovely in here. All I can hear, the odd bird tweeting and my footsteps. Gosh, look at this. I just spotted this from the, the footpath and there's actually a, a footpath that diverts off from the main path that we've been following. So I thought I'd investigate. And this must be uh, a fishing lake, I imagine. I can see some fish out there getting flies on the surface. Beautiful. All right, this is the road that uh, goes into the village that comes up from Hook. So we cross this and continue into the woods on the other side, still on the Brenda Park away. Oh, it's lovely and cool in here for sure. Now, when I was doing the, the research for this walk, I noticed on a map there was a, an avenue of trees. I don't know whether they were chestnut or lime. Um, I, I'll just mention it because I wonder whether it's got anything to do with uh, um, Tilney Hall, which is to the west of here. We're not going to be able to see it, but um, it, it, there's been a mansion on the site since 1561, and uh, well, the first Tilney Hall wasn't actually built until 1700 and, and the present house was built in the 1890s. I think it was a school between 1948 and 1984 and then it became a hotel in 1985. But the reason I mention it is because, well, if, if you do look at that map, there are gardens that have been landscaped with a, a row of trees and it looks like that row continues all the way along here at one stage, but not 100% sure. Well, this is as far east as we're going to go on the walk. I'm going to say goodbye to the Brenda Park away. Now I'm going to start heading northwards through some woodland called Street End Copse. Now this little footbridge here goes over a stream and the stream feeds a huge lake or pond. I think it's called Reedon Pond. Over to my left, it's about two and a half acres, but sadly, I don't think we're going to be able to see it. That's quite useful at the edge of the woods here. A dispenser for dog waste bags and also a dog waste bin. Excellent stuff. Well, I just come out of one lot of woods crossing the road which goes to the village, but we're going to continue heading northwards, uh, circumnavigating the village on the eastern side. Well, I'm guessing this is the the boundary of the village along here, you can see there's a, a bank with uh, trees planted along the top and a ditch on one side. I'm only guessing, of course. Beautiful little part of the walk here, though. Nice firm footpath and very peaceful woodland on my right. Now, although that sign says private drive, no access to the farm, the footpath sign is right next to it. Wow, 
Ah, uh, just a little pit stop to take in the views. We're on the northern side of Rotherwick now, heading towards a place called, I think it's called Lyde Green. And this is just looking over to the north. Well, I'm now at Lyde Green and uh, this house in front of me here, the Old Fox, used to be a pub. An 1896 map shows it as uh, the Fox Inn or a beer house. You can see obviously now it's residential, but uh, when it ceased to be a pub, I don't know. We've now got a tiny little bit of road work. I was a bit worried when I saw it on the map because it's a warm day and tarmac can get quite hot. I was a bit concerned about Logan's feet, but actually this little lane is nice and shaded, so we're quite cool. Well, just as I make my way down this delightful shaded lane, Mill Lane, you just have to stop from time to time and check out the views either side, just soak up some of that countryside vista. Terrific time of year to be out and about. very much on the homeward leg now heading back towards Rotherwick. I've got some woodland on my left and vast area of freshly harvested fields on my right. Oh, I'll tell you what folks, such a shame it's a Monday. Today would have been an ideal day to test out the coach and horses purely for research purposes for the video of course. Well, yet, a, yet another pit stop <laughs> to take in the views. And why not? You don't often get days like today with the blue sky and such sunshine. So we've been walking along the side of this field. Oh, an impressive uh, crop of sunflowers. Well, all of their heads are drooping. I think they all need a drink. And then just on the other side, a crop of maize that won't be far off harvesting I reckon and this is our very very last section if I've got my bearings right we just follow this path to the edge of the field and that should take us to the church and back to the car well folks we've come to the end of our walk sadly no pub to finish in <laughs> so we thought we'd do the end scene here in front of the quite magnificent Rotherwick Village Hall. We hope you enjoyed the walk today. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We've had a super walk today. The weather has been glorious. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy. <laughs>